Hey guys, I started this video series uh, back in January, so it's been 10 months or more at this point. So uh, I didn't think it was going to turn into a series, but it did. So some of the things I say may or may not quite add up a little bit as it moves along, but here it is. Enjoy. Let me know what you think. Hey guys, this is something different I've been thinking about for a while and never really got around to because there's a lot going on in my world. So anyways, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to just spitball ideas here. Uh, this may turn into something in a product. It may turn into nothing, but this is, uh, this is what I do when I get a random idea in my head that I think might be... Uh, worth pursuing. So I'll work out the details here in my CAD CAM software. So I use Fusion 360. It's a relatively inexpensive but pretty full featured CAM software, CAD software. So let's get started. Um, what I'm looking to do here is well, I've always, I'm always working on new products. I think you guys know that anyways. And I'm going to tell you probably 80 plus percent of the ideas I have and products that I think about and put a lot of time, energy, even money into uh, don't come to fruition. They don't meet my standards. They, uh, they fall short. Uh, there, there's endless reasons why I wouldn't pursue them, uh, for one reason or another. But basically, um, this is kind of my scratching board. So rough sketches, uh, something you can kind of relate to here, a uh, little thumbnail. So I'm going to let you sit through and watch me do this. I don't normally talk to myself while I'm doing this, so it might be weird if it gets quiet for a while. Uh, I apologize, uh, during editing, maybe I'll try and throw in a little music there. Uh, if it's long dry spells, but um, this is what I do. So what I'm thinking about doing is using a pancake motor and trying to create a very small, compact tattoo machine that still works with a tube and a cartridge system. Um, I've worked on tons of pens. You guys know I've had prototypes out there uh, as far back as 2014, 2015. And um, those are still in the works. Don't get me wrong. I just don't have enough free time to do it. And I don't have a massive staff here of uh, R&D engineers to work on that for me. So I pick away with it here and there when I get the time. And... Uh, move forward on the stuff that looks uh, promising and uh, bail on the stuff that doesn't. So uh, I'll give you an idea here. I'm just going to pop back to my home page here and you can see each one of these is uh, on the left hand side is going to be random different products. Or, so anyways, I'm always working on something. I'm rambling. So let's get to work here. So what I will usually do is there's only a few motor styles that are being used uh, successfully in tattoo machines. So I generally am pretty well aware of the specs of those motors and the sizes, dimensions have uh, 3D CAD formats. So what we're going to do here is uh, I'm opening up one of those motors now here on the screen. Uh, you can see it. It's a full Featured cab model, three-dimensional, everything is correct on it. Um, basically, I'm going to look at this every which way I can and try and decide what is the most effective way to... Um, I like to add as little as possible to any product I design. I do not like to overcomplicate things. I want them to be simple and run as trouble-free as long as they possibly can. So uh, most of you know I'm a fan of direct drive rotaries. Uh, you really can't get any more efficient. So that's what we're going to play with today. I have other things that I think about and tinker with, but uh, let's keep it simple today. So 
first things first, I've got this motor here. Um, you can look up here to the top right corner and there is my origins. And right now, the Z normally points upwards in the machining world when you're talking about uh, vertical machining centers and stuff like that. So uh, right now, this motor is pointing to the sky. I like to build my motors, or not my motors, build my projects as I would use them or look at them. So I would like to get this uh, facing in the Y axis, which would be straight at me. And so basically I'm going to just, let's see. Oh, I did not want to do that that way. All right, let's do this. Let's kill this. All right, we're on a blank document. First thing I'm going to do is save this. We'll call this one uh, overhead three, because I think the last one I saved was overhead two I was tinkering with. And Ran into some walls on that one pretty quickly that I didn't want to put the energy into resolving. Okay, so now I've created a new file. I've saved it, and now I'm going to insert the motor. When I insert the motor, it quickly gives me uh, the ability to uh, orient that to what's going on. So what I want to do is I'm going to turn this 90 degrees so that is facing that way. Uh, and does not look as if the motor is on center with the origin for the product we're working on. So we're also going to uh, select my origin point of here, target point, turn on that origin, turn off the motor and select that. All right, so now I turn my motor back on, and yes, I should be right down the center. So the way this is set right now, and everybody's going to work in their own, with their own criteria as to what they, the way they think of things, view things, visualize them, uh, uh, stuff like this. So basically, I want in this particular situation to have the center of the motor shaft as my Y axis and my Z axis plane I'm going to have as the front face of the motor. Um, the most obvious places to put that would be the back face of the motor, the rear of the, uh, uh, the shaft housing, um, the base of the motor shaft or the point of the motor shaft, but all along that, uh, that, uh, shaft axis it seems to be the most common sense place to put that so now i've got that in place i'm going to just simply work with a few other items that i have uh developed for other projects a, a simple cam i want to say this is a four millimeter cam i had developed uh a, a push bar which i may need to modify depending upon the dimensions of this to try and get the center of mass of the motor, cam bearings, everything else centered over the tube shaft so that there's not a lot of rear weight, not a lot of forward weight. Uh, try and equal that out. So the bend in the push rod is, is uh, something that gets calculated later. But I, I have one to work with here for a temporary. Anyway, so what I'm thinking about in this model is I would like to have, let me turn this to a profile here. I'm trying to think of ways I can get the RCA connector uh, closer to center so there's not a lot of tail weight from the cord, things like that. So what I am going to work on is I've got a few random things. Uh, I don't know if you can see this little tiny thumbnail over here. I was trying to do one where I get the cord to face forward. Um, there would be a cover over the front of the motor, so you really would never tell which was the front or the back. But that was a, I'll give you a quick peek at what I was working on. Um, so this is, uh, Kind of what I was working on, and then I would build a a cover around the front here, and that puts the the contact point sort of centered over everything. And that something I was working on. I'm, I'm not saying 
uh, it won't happen. It could very well happen in the future. Um, I probably either a if I if I decide I pick one of these eyes, I want to run with it. I won't release this video until after the parts are in production and the uh, machines uh, either ready to be released or has been released, just to avoid uh, uh, biters too much. Um, but anyways. You can kind of see what I'm working with here. When, I, when I'm putting in the RCA, I've either got to have a method to uh, get the nut on the back to hold the RCA connector firmly in place. Uh, there would be the option to just use a tiny uh, drop of uh, thread locker to hold it in place. But at that point, you kind of lose the ability to clamp the, uh, the ground wire. Uh, to the nut in the rear. So there's other methods to handle that too. There's 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 ways to do everything, but uh, I try and keep things simple and work with off the part off the shelf products uh, parts when I can, uh, other than the the bodies and vices and things like that which we manufacture here. So, anyways, this was one I was working on, and I just kind of it was going to turn into needing a body a front plate and a rear plate and that's not outrageous but uh it's i think it's kind of unnecessary i think i can simplify this and get this down into to two products uh two machine parts for the main structure so uh i may come back to that i may not so what i was thinking now is what is a different method to have that RCA coming in from a different angle, um, going into a rear housing, which is finished and not requiring a back cap. Now this will require um, putting the cord off facing to the rear of the machine, uh, the perceived rear of the machine. Uh, I want the machine to be balanced so that you wouldn't know one way or the other, but I would think we can agree wherever the cord is pointing is traditionally the rear of the machine. You don't want it hanging out over your work. So anyway, so I'm going to quickly create a sketch on the uh, face of this motor because that's my Z, uh, my, my Z, excuse me, my plane. Um, X, Z axis plane. And what I'm going to do is I know the, the outside diameter of this motor, so I'm quickly going to just uh, create one with a little bit, oops, ha ha. Okay, let's see. I'm working an inch, not millimeter, so. Uh, Okay, that's more accurate. I did not, I work in both depending upon what I'm doing. Uh, what I'm starting with here is uh, a motor that's in metric, so I'm going to work in millimeters just because, uh, well, to be honest, it's easier. It's hard to, it's hard for me to admit because I am getting to be an old guy and I have forever and a day been brought up with the, uh, you know, traditional uh, English metric system or English measurement systems of inches. And, and I know those decimals uh, incredibly well down to uh, sixteenths and even 30 seconds of an inch and can do that math in my head, which is kind of frightening at times. But um, so you see here, my sketch is just outside. So I'm leaving myself about six thousandths of an inch uh, perimeter around the motor. Um, for error, uh, machined a hair underside and a hair oversized. Uh, the anodization process of the aluminum creates a anodized uh, thickness layer on the product part. So I try and think of all that from the very, very, very beginning to not have to go back and revise too much later on down the road. But uh, there will be plenty of that without making, you know, huge uh, hairbrained errors like this to start with. So we, we created that um, finished sketch, real simple software. Um, 
actually, I created that sketch in the main document. I don't want it there. Um, again, this talking while working, uh, I would be 30 minutes. And I'd be way ahead already if I wasn't trying to share this with you. But uh, all right, I'm going to create a new, a new component. Let's call this uh, motor housing because that's what it's going to do. Keep it simple. Um, other thing I'm thinking about, I want to go ahead and break the link to my my uh, items on the left-hand side over here. I like to work that way. If it was a component that I had built separately in another file, I would want it linked so that if I updated that, it would update there. But um, I'm not going to be doing that, and I'm not going to. I can't change the specs of the motor without spending an absolute boatload of money. So um, I'm not going to do that at least in this experimental phase. Okay, so we have a motor housing component now. All I'm going to do quickly is I'm going to grab these sketches and drag it into motor housing because that's where I want it because that's what that sketch pertains to. Uh, in addition to that, I'm going to try and keep my workflow organized. So I'm going to go uh, motor OD with clearance. Just, it doesn't hurt. So just to keep it organized, because once you get going, you end up with a ton of sketches uh, to find the one you want real quick. If they're just labeled sketch one through 86, you're not going to remember what you want. So, all right. So we have that. We're now working in the motor housing because this box is, uh, this little dot is clicked as opposed to this dot, which is the entire project or this dot being just the motor. So we're building it, working in this, uh, context here. So, all right, I'm going to just uh, oops, hide the motor quickly. All I've got on my screen now is that. So I'm going to, I'm going to hit E for extend, grab this. And I know my motor housing is uh, about seven, seven millimeters deep. I also know I should have roughly five millimeters behind that uh, for neat simple wiring. I could get away with less if I bend the tabs in, but then I, the more I mess with that and the more confined I make it, there's a stronger chance of uh, having something ground out. So uh, to me, not really worth the effort. So, all right. So at this point, I've selected everything here. Um, and, oh, excuse me. This talking and working is not easy. Okay, so I'm going to go back into that sketch. I didn't come up with an outside diameter. That's going to be my inside diameter for my housing. Uh, C for circle. Uh, grab my center, drag it out, and I don't need a ridiculously thick housing around this. So let's just go to, uh, uh, man, uh, let's go to 29. That'll give us a little bit more than. Uh, a sixteenth of an inch, so not quite a millimeter and a half because of the clearance that we created. So, all right, now we'll go to extend. We'll grab this. We know we need seven for the motor casing, and we're going to additionally add five. So uh, we want to go in the other direction. So we'll go negative twelve millimeters, and we have a simple tube, which uh, we can turn the motor back on and. If I highlight the whole project, now you can see kind of how it works. Believe it or not, this is how these projects start. Looks simple. It is simple, but uh, you got to start somewhere. So um, I've tried starting with projects with more details and then working backwards. And it can be done, but in the long run, um, when you're working backwards, a lot of times you'll find an inherent problem that would have been caught in the very beginning, and you don't find it till after you have a boatload of work involved, and that's that's no fun. So basically, uh, so this is where we're at now. Let's go back to our motor housing, and now that's still there, and it's shaded so we can see it, um, but obviously we don't want it all bold because then we can't see what we're working on. All right, so now 
if I bring the RCA in, let's go insert into new. All right, so let's pull it up top. We know we want it up top. And it's facing the wrong way. In this case, I know I want to, let's look at it straight from the top. This being the back of the motor, this being the front with this. All right, so I'm going to turn this 90 degrees so it's facing the rear. I'm going to drag it sort of to the center, and I'm going to say good enough for government work. Now, the best way for me to make sure that this is aligned perfectly up and down with my Z uh, is to use the alignment tool. It doesn't need to be. I happen to be one of those guys that finds symmetry uh, incredibly appealing, so I will do that. I could put it off to the corner to, uh, you know, I mean, realistically, uh, let's break that link while we're thinking about it here. All right, so I can, uh, this, I'm looking from the front of the machine now. I can, in fact, if I wanted to, put this off say 45 degrees here, and that makes the machine shorter. Um, it puts the weight off to one side too. Uh, does that make a difference? Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. Uh, realistically, if I wanted to have the RCA, let's say more centered over the motor and up, up a little bit, back a little bit, you know, there's nobody, that, there's no reason in the world that the RCA can't come off the motor from a side, especially if I'm balancing the rest of the motor, it wouldn't be a problem. Aesthetically, I haven't built one that way. Who knows? I may know. I might have just inspired a, a future idea for myself. But uh, for right now, we're uh, just simply going to go back to where we were. Oh, I, I control z one too many times. All right. so. I do want this centered, so what I'm going to quickly do is I'm going to grab my align tool and I'm going to just grab, uh, let's say, this cylinder and uh, this cylinder. Those are concentric now. And now I'm going to grab the RCA, hit M for move, and drag it up above the machine again. But I know I'm absolutely squared above the machine right now. Um, I know that I need about 16 millimeters clearance to get a, uh, a, a deep well socket in the back to uh, put tension on the nut, lock the uh, RCA in place. So let's uh, just quickly do a, uh, let's, let's, Hide our motor housing for a second, turn our RCA on. Oops. And here's another mistake I made because I was talking. Um, I do not want the RCA to be a subproduct of the motor housing. It would be okay there, but uh, I want it to be just another product in overhead. And there we go. So it's no longer the hidden when I hide the. Uh, Motor housing. All right, so let's work on the motor housing, but using the RCA. Another sketch plane. I, I know. Let's get out of that. All right, back to RCA. Uh, and this is kind of how my brain thinks. Uh, what you're hearing is is kind of an internal conversation I would have while I'm going through this. Uh, uh, cursing myself out when I make mistakes and uh, and whatnot. But let's go back to this. Let's change this. Uh, looking from well, it's called the right side, but let's change the angle of this to thirty degrees. Kind of looks appealing. Twenty five, forty five seems a little steep. Thirty five, thirty. That seems either way. Um, Thirty-five. We'll just call it that. And uh, and again, that's not all math and science all the time. Sometimes you just pick something that looks good. Um, okay. 
let's 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 move it around a little bit too. Let's say now we know we can't have the RCA hitting the motor, obviously. Um, let's rotate this at the same time, just around this circle. Uh, just basically, I want to get uh, the rear tab. I'll show you what I mean here. Um, this, the soldering lug, it sticks out sort of uh, as a semicircle off the rear of the RCA. Uh, in theory, you could cut it shorter. It's not a big deal to do. But I'm just going to work with the stock product as it is for the time being. Um, so you can see we would still be contacting the motor here a little bit. So we will simply move that one more time. And let's see. Let's go this direction to that direction one. Um, okay, we have plenty of clearance. Uh, in the machining world, we just say clearance is clearance. Doesn't matter if it's an inch, doesn't matter if it's uh, a thousandth. If you're not hitting the other part, you're not hitting it. Life is good. So, all right. Let's see. That's. That's it so far. That's pretty boring, uh, to be honest. Um, not a whole lot of excitement. So I know now if I just visualize the line coming off of this down, then I'm, I'm going to be outside this housing. So let's let's actually get into the RCA for a second here. What I'm going to do is create another body around that basically giving myself a visual idea of uh, how much space I absolutely need kind of as a minimum. So now we're working in the RCA alone. So this is not connected to the motor or the housing. Um, we're working in the RCA. We're going to create a sketch on the back face here. And we are going to draw a couple of circles from the center. We are going to go with. Um, 16 millimeters. I said I need that for clearance to get the uh, deep well socket in there. I'm going to draw another one. Let's just go to 18 millimeters. Um, that's a one millimeter wall thickness um, for the part. Okay, finish sketch. And let's extend this down to. Distance to object. Let's go. Can we pick a point right on inside the motor and the housing? Let's just pick this point here. And okay. Okay, so that's kind of what I need to have, the area which I get to work within. In uh, with this product for the most part, I can trim away, I can add to it, I can do whatever I want, but for the most part, I need this. All right, let's turn that on, turn that on, and all right, with that 35 degrees, uh, now I can see that line really having to, to continue out. And I know it's not going to get where I want it to because I'd like this line to kind of merge with the front face of this housing um, aesthetically. So there's two ways I can do that. I can uh, move this part farther and farther out. Okay, so right here we can see where this is going to come in line with this to some degree. All right, we can't do that because that's going to be totally colliding with the motor. So let's change and let's go to the 45 degrees. I, I don't love 45 because it's so generic, but uh, we had 35 before. We just added 10. So now we're 
uh, the line from the cord coming out and the vertical on the uh, body and motor is uh, 45 degrees. And all right, so now we kind of can work with this. So how far do we need to go to not have contact? All right, and actually now, let me do this. Uh, oh, that's the body. Let's change the appearance of that to be um, clear plastic. It's it's a it's not a part of the machine, so we'll just do whatever we want with it. Huh. Translucent. That's not translucent. Uh, all right, we'll just modify this and we will go to translucency and we will uh, bump these really up and see what happens. No? Ah, all right. Well, let me do it with just appearance. So let's, uh, come on. Hmm. Bear with me. I do not know why it is not allowing me to right click at this point. Let's control Z out of that. All right. Back to where we started. Let's change the actual material to be. There's what I was looking for. Clear acrylic. All right. Should have just went there to begin with. All right. So now we can look back and see, okay, we're not touching the back of the motor, but I can see that if I take this and I change the, all I got to do is grab any, any round surface here. And I'm going to swing that 180 degrees. And it's not allowing me. There we go. Okay. Now simply by rotating this 180 degrees, I added more clearance between the motor and the RCA again. And so now what that gives me the ability to do is and let's pull this motor. I can pull it down more. Look at that. Clearance is clearance. I'm not near either of my terminals. I have plenty of room still to wire. I've got that pretty darn close. I, I could cut it closer. I could pull it closer and cut the tab off a little bit. Um, uh, again, entirely possible, but uh, maybe not necessary. Let's uh, let's see what we got. Um, and let's go. All right. I'm kind of liking this. Uh, and again, um, you're going to see while I'm doing this too, I'm doing this just from scratch. I'm working with uh, minimal components and you're going to notice while I do this, you might very well see that, oh, that looks similar to so-and-so's machine or this design or that design or whatever. Uh, that's because uh, most engineers are probably working in a similar mindset, uh, so most I would say are way more advanced than I am because they actually have engineering degrees. I've just been building things since I was young, so um, I know what I know. I read a lot, and uh, that's what I do. So, but again, you're going to see why a lot of machines look 
the way they do. And it's not like anybody's biting or trying to steal or anything. They're trying to minimize their designs, make things as simple, functional, and, and efficient as possible. So, all right. So I kind of like this. So that's a decent place to start. Now, let's put a small back plate on here. We can't. We know we've got to come out to at least this far in this situation because I'm going to need to bore this hole at an angle up here. Um, so if my back wall of my motor housing is prior to that, when I bore through, there's going to be a little gap. So I can do one of a couple things. I can bring the RCA a little closer to the back of the motor because I do still have clearance. I could clip it short if that clearance gets to be too minimal. Um, so in order to keep the housing as compact as possible, I uh, think I'm going to take a look at that. I just, I will do this. I'll drag things around the screen all the time and see what works and doesn't work. Okay. I still have clearance. I'm there. Uh, by the time I add a back on this, that could work. So let's see. Let's do this. Turn off the RCA for just a moment. And we are going to, uh, we're working. Always make sure that I'm working in the area I want to. So that if not, I want to, I want to sketch in the motor housing, but if I'm still in RCA, that sketch isn't there. So I just, you make those mistakes. You got to back up or, or drag things around. And you can drag them around and up until the point where they, uh, you've created a feature out of them. Uh, sketches can be moved as long as they're not attached to anything. Um, okay, so I'm in the motor housing. I'm going to create a sketch on this back plane. And all I'm going to do, uh, what to call parametric programming, rather than, even though I know the outside dimension of this is 29 millimeters, I'm not going to draw a 29 millimeter circle because if I go back and change that, dimension in one of the original sketches in the housing, it's going to create a disconnect between future work. So uh, parametric programming means I rely heavily upon uh, uh, criteria I've already dictated in the uh, previous components. So I'm going to hit P for project. I'm going to project this outside line into this sketch. And that's it. I'm done. That's all I wanted to do. So if I now turn, let's see, I want to, okay, so now that I've selected the, everything from the back of the motor plate here, um, I'm okay with a one millimeter back. And wow, geez. I made a cup. You, it took all this time for you guys to uh, get me to make a cup because that's what we have if I hide the motor. We have a cup. Let me hide that origin too. That's it. Ta-da! Now given, I would have done this in five minutes if I wasn't walking you guys through it. So, okay. So let's turn the, uh, the RCA back on. And now uh, again, because that's not the component were selected, it's going to show as transparent. We'll grab the entire component and you can kind of see how the two would relate to one another. I can't get that RCA a whole lot closer to that motor um, without altering it. Uh, uh, so therefore, that's satisfying to me. Um, I don't like the 45 degree angle, but I'm going to make the concession because it kind of works in this situation. Um, give you an idea here. Do a sectional analysis. Uh, that plane, you can see how these things would interact. Let me turn the motor back on. Okay. So you can see where I have full contact from when I build this wall into here. Uh, into 
the main housing. So in theory, this will work. I say we uh, we try it because I don't want to just go back and forth all day long and not show you guys a little bit of something. So, okay, so what we're going to do now is we're basically going to build this again, and we're going to turn it off uh, in the RCA because we, we don't want it there. We're going to go back into our motor housing, and I can build in this component using faces and features of other components. So that's what we're going to do. I'll turn off my analysis here too. Um, now, same thing we did just a minute ago is we're going to sketch off the back face of the RCA. We, I know already what I'm shooting for. There's my center point. I'm going to pull out 16 millimeters because that's the inside diameter I need. I'm going to do another of 18. I want a one millimeter wall thickness, which is plenty. And what I'm going to do first is I am going to extend this face and this face. Um, anytime I'm bolting to something, I like a little more meat. So I'll go 1.5 millimeters on that. And then I'm going to create another sketch on here. Uh, hide that body, but uh, where's that last sketch we created? Here, and I want to project this inner line and that outer line to this new sketch. Again, I'm not dictating extra dimensions when they're already there by a prior component um, to keep that parametric flow going. So if I go back and I change this outside diameter or this inside diameter uh, on its original sketch, that'll push all the way through to the finished product later on. Um, okay, so let's see, let's turn, we now want to extend that down. Let's turn the, Bodies back on so we can see it. Go to a right side view and let's just pull it right in. We don't need to get that. See, now that would create that problem there. So let's uh, uh 14.5 millimeters just, just to get into the part. Whoa, look at that. We cut a hole. All right, let's change this to join and there we go. No, what the heck just happened? Um, probably should have done that the other way around. All right, we're going to do that. We're going to do that. We're going to go back to this. We are going to, we're going to build the barrel first and then we'll cap it. So, and from the right view, blah, 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 we are going to, Pull that to, I think we said 14.5. Go back and look because I wasn't sure. Now, see, that still says new body. We want to join. So we're joining the one we just created into the body that was already there. Now we will go in and we will grab this surface. We will extend this uh, down 1.5 millimeters. And that's that. And we'll hide that sketch. So that's no longer there. All right, so now this is looking just a little weird because we have two things uh, completely interacted, and you can see there's no tidy RCA here too. Um, it appears that there's these cavities and everything. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to go in here. Uh, Create a sketch on this plane, and we are going to again project this line. Done, finished, and now we're going to take that. We're going to where's our cross section analysis? I love this. All right, we are going to now we're going to cut this 
up to that surface. Okay. Awesome. And we are going to, let's see, what was this sketch? See, I wasn't updating my sketch titles because I'm talking. And uh, let's go back to this sketch here. And we're going to extrude all of this. We're going to cut that. And we're going to cut that back to this plane. OK. And let's turn off our analysis. And we have. I don't know why that looks that way. Is that a recess? Is that a... Why is... Ah, okay. That last one I did, I didn't select this center. All right. All right, so there's... That is a complete object. I mean, that is, in theory, a good motor housing. Um, I would build a couple of standoffs into the back of this so that the motor doesn't go all the way to the rear. The terminals don't hit the back of the housing and ground out. So let's, uh, let's do that. And all right. I kind of know the depth of these. They would be, because I've worked with this motor before, uh, five and a half millimeters. But let's... Um, To build, let's turn off that sketch. There we go. So we can get it back here. All right, new sketch on the rear panel of this. Let's turn on the motor, and I've got these neat little, uh, I don't know, I want to call them tab mounts, but there's these little sections in the back of the motor that uh, are perfect for. Uh, placing something, uh, positioning it, uh, four corners, they'd be 90 degrees from each other, passing through the center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to project um, okay, let's cancel, finish sketch, um, motor housing off. I'm going to go into the motor itself. And on the back of the motor, I'm going to create a sketch right here. Bam. Oh, that's what I want to do. And what do I want to do? I want to project that surface, those shapes, onto that sketch. Uh, again, I'm going to designate as few numbers as possible. I want to, I got to work around the components the way they, they arrive from the factory. So, all right. So, Let's turn the motor housing back on. Let's get into working in the motor housing again. We were, get back into the sketch we just created. Okay. So I'm going to take a circle and I'm going to, I don't know if you can, you guys probably can't tell, but uh, let's project. Where's that sketch? Oh, let's turn the body off. All right, I'm stumped. Uh, I missed something, done something wrong. Um, ah, I created the motor housing sketch after. I created this sketch. So watch this. This is, this is kind of weird, but it, it makes sense. Everything's uh, in a linear time frame. So you can't, I know I'm working in this sketch and I'm trying to rely on something I created later. Well, it doesn't exist while I'm trying to work in this sketch. So uh, it happens, but you, you just got to pay attention. Okay. So let's cancel out of that. Finish sketch. All I'm going to do, watch this. Absolutely crazy. Delete that sketch. And I'm going to create a new sketch 
on. Turn off the motor so I can get to the back wall here. Same sketch we just were working within, but now I'm going to have the ability to pull those lines from the other sketch because it's no longer in the future. I've created the sketch after I've created that sketch. So, and you can tell if I if I hover over this line, I get a center point right there. Um, so, I'm in the sketch. I'm going to go to C. Uh, uh, let's just let's do it that way. Let's project this, 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 and this. These four tabs. Okay, those are now projected into there. Now I'm going to draw a circle right off of that center point. I think I want to go. Uh, trying to think. I've done this before, um, and it doesn't need a lot. So 1.5. Uh, let's go 75. 1.75 millimeters. Okay, that dimension. Um, here's a neat fusion trick. I'm going to hover over that dimension. That's going to tell me that's dimension 26. So I've only designated 26 dimensions at this point in time. I'm going to use that D26, and I'm going to create another circle over here because I want them to all be the same. All I'm going to type is D26, bam. Uh, and I could do this with a rectangular pattern. Um, and I would if there wasn't just a few of them, but um, this is just how I do this at this point. Okay, so uh, finish sketch. And all right, so now I'm going to simply extend and turn my motor off. I'm going to extend these four bosses. I know I need to come up um, and look, make sure it's going to pull in the right direction. Yes, uh, 5.5 millimeters uh, up. Okay, and then because you can't machine a hard corner like that. You can if you have fifth access and you want to get absolutely crazy about it, but it's much easier just to take these edges and Do what we call a fillet. So I'm going to do a, a 1.75 millimeter fillet, which will allow me to do that easily with a three millimeter end mill and easy to machine. Done. Now the motor has some bosses to rest on. So let's turn that motor back on. We are going to do a Let's see, let's go back to the full view analysis on and let's create a, a new sectional analysis on this plane and we're just going to pull it back to one of these bosses. Okay, so we get it to the point where the boss is and look at the right side here. All right, let's measure this and see what this is. Let's see what the distance is between this plane and this plane, and I know that's 0.3 millimeters. Okay, so my memory was not correct. I can pull that boss up oh, close my measuring tool uh we did 5.5 so let's go 5.8 millimeters and now we'll look at it from the right and i can see that my motor is clearly resting on these bosses i created so uh, no fears of the motor or the tabs going back grounding out creating issue or anything and you can see <clears throat> excuse me it's 
been a while since I've had some coffee. You've been watching. All right, much better. Okay, so let's turn the RCA back on. Let's collapse these down so we don't have a mess over here. And RCA on back to complete view. You can see from the side up into this cavity here, the RCA would come down in. I have minimal clearance in the back of the motor, not contacting anything else. Motor seated properly, uh, clearance between the terminals and the rear of the housing, and enough room for wiring, but not a whole lot more. Okay, so that's the back of a simple machine housing. So, all right, so next project is to add the cams, the bearings, uh, the uh, push rod mount, uh, and try and come up, construct a uh, what we want for a front cover. And, and then after that, we will, uh, we will work on the, um, the tube mount down here. And then to be honest with you, we have a goddamn tattoo machine and, uh, you know, Let's see what happens, but I think that'll do it for now because I've been talking for a long time. I've been doing this. Uh, honestly, I could knock this out in 30 minutes comfortably, but uh, not even sure how long I've been talking. But I hope you enjoyed it and you'll get a little bit of insight as to how I think and uh, do things and and all that fun stuff. I'm always trying to create. Uh, I have dozens and dozens of uh things in here that never come to fruition and uh, some may still someday some may not depends on how much uh, free time energy and money I got laying around so um, we can all use more of those things trust me uh, so anyways I uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, thanks for watching I don't think I'll make a full series out of it but it'll at least be two or three short videos or lengthy as this one turned out uh, to give you a little peek into what goes on in my brain. So thanks for watching and uh, you guys have a great day. And while you're waiting for the next episode in this series, uh, be sure to click this link somewhere over here and uh, check out the entire playlist. And as always, thanks for watching.